For the past 100 years, the Calgary Stampede has brought you to a place of wonder and excitement. A place filled with entertainment like no other. An event for young and old, for anyone from anywhere. A magical place where the best cowboys in the world come to play. But let's just wait a second here. A hundred years is a long time. So maybe we should start back where it all began. The greatest outdoor show on earth. In 1884, some of Calgary's 500 citizens formed the Calgary and District Agricultural Society. A couple of years later, they held their first fall fair, bringing 500 visitors to the town. Calgary was establishing itself as an important livestock center, as well as an attractive place to settle. By 1900, the Ag Society became the Inter-Western Pacific Exhibition Company, and by then, it was an annual event. 1908 was a big year for Calgary, when it was awarded the Dominion Exhibition. It was then that 94 acres of bare exhibition grounds, coined Victoria Park, were transformed into a park space for a midway, an elephant act, a hydrogen-filled airship, and the Miller Brothers 101 Ranch Wild West Show. A building frenzy resulted in a grandstand, art pavilion, livestock, and exhibit buildings. Over 100,000 people visited the park that year. Meanwhile, throughout the West, there was a fear of life on the range coming to an end, compelling artists and writers to begin capturing that life in their work. It was this New Yorker, a man by the name of Guy Wiedek, who, inspired by his uncle's stories of Western American life, devoted his own to keeping cowboy ways alive. He learned the ropes of showmanship with the Miller Brothers Wild West Show and was taken by the city of Calgary when the troupe performed at the Dominion Exhibition. Calgary brought together the ranching industry, Treaty 7 First Nations, beautiful rolling foothills, and a stunning Rocky Mountain backdrop. With the excitement of staging a huge event to honor the West, Wiedek returned to Calgary, and in 1912, with the help of CPR's livestock agent, H.C. McMullen, he secured $100,000 from four successful cattlemen, Pat Burns, George Lane, A.J. McLean, and A.E. Cross, now known as the Big Four. This was to be no small event. The Frontier Days and Cowboy Championship contest was meant as an authentic tribute to the last and best Great West. The Big Four's instructions to Wiedek were clear. Spare no expense to make it the best thing of its kind in the world and a square deal for all. So in 1912, the first stampede took place. It was an exciting time. 80,000 people took to the streets to watch the opening parade, far surpassing Calgary's population of 50,000. Wiedek invited the best cowboys and cowgirls in North America to compete for $20,000 in prize money. Kainai cowboy Tom Three Persons became the celebrated Canadian champion when he rode Outlaw Horse Cyclone to a standstill. 17 events ranged from bronc riding to stagecoach races. Wiedek was determined to make the Stampede the biggest event of its kind. Adding even more culture to the Stampede, 1,800 First Nations people played an important role, leading the parade, competing in rodeo, and camping in the first formal Indian village. Stampede was a great success, though it was not repeated until 1919, with a victory stampede celebrating veterans of the First World War. Meanwhile, crowds still poured into Victoria Park every summer for the annual festivities. When attendance slowed in the 20s, exhibition manager Ernie Richardson invited Wiedek and the Stampede to join forces. It was then, in 1923, that the Calgary Exhibition and Stampede became an annual tradition in July. Stampede spirit took over the entire city with Old West storefront decorations, Western outfits, and a huge street dance in downtown Calgary. Wiedek introduced chuck wagon racing as an exciting new event, and it was here where pancake breakfasts got their start, when one of the drivers, Wild Horse Jack Morton, set up his cook stove and began feeding the crowd. We're headed for the round of going to the big stampede. Oh, Dick Cosgo, we're riding in the lead. The old chuck's wagon rattling, the snorting bucking barongs. We're headed for the Calgary stampede. The 20s and 30s solidified the Calgary Stampede as an annual community celebration of Western heritage. With a strong and talented volunteer corps, the Calgary Stampede continued to evolve despite Guy Wiedek's departure in 1932. The Calgary Stampede continued to be active in the community, playing host to sporting events and taking over the Calgary Stampeders Hockey Club in 1944. Just two years later, the team brought home the Allen Cup 
and soon called the Stampede Corral home ice. Calgary's population nearly doubled in the 50s, seeing increased popularity with visits from royalty, Hollywood cowboys and celebrities. It was the golden age. Stampede royalty were crowned and an honorary parade marshal became a new tradition. By 1965, after much success, the Calgary Stampede was in desperate need of space. Plans were made to expand the park, becoming a main focus over the coming years. It was also around this time that the Stampede changed the format of their grandstand show to include more local youth talent. And since 1968, the young Canadians of the Calgary Stampede have been the feature of the nightly grandstand show. In the 1970s, Calgary's growth was driven by the oil economy. As fewer people had direct rural routes, the Calgary Stampede looked for fresh ways of preserving the community's Western heritage. New events were introduced year-round. Rodeo Royal, Oktoberfest, and an agricultural roundup. The grounds were renamed Stampede Park, and in 1976, attendance broke one million. The symbol of the white hat, first adopted by Calgary in the late 40s, was further established when the Stampede took part in hosting the Olympic Winter Games in 1988, a representation of Calgary's Western values that very much remains a part of Stampede culture today. Through the 90s and into the early millennium, Stampede Park continued expanding, a new vision was mapped out in 2006 to reinvigorate the park that now lies right in the heart of the city. Today, members of the community and visitors from around the globe descend on Stampede Park to celebrate Western heritage. Most famous for its rodeo, the Stampede has grown to include a range of art, entertainment, cultural and agricultural events with a vision of establishing a world-class year-round gathering place. Expansion will continue when 30 acres of property transforms into a beautiful riverfront park. Western traditions will hold strong in the agricultural discovery zone and a vibrant youth campus will provide creative space for Calgary's young talent. So as it turns out, the 1912 Stampede wasn't just a one-off token of farewell to life on the range, but the beginning of a continuing celebration of Western spirit and values that are as relevant today as they were a hundred years ago. The greatest outdoor show on earth began with the vision of a cowboy and the legendary accomplishments of the Big Four, but continues to thrive because of a powerful community that plays a significant role in building this great legacy.